The skin, also known as the dermis or cutis, is the largest human organ, accounting for approximately 16% of our overall body weight. Our skin's primary role is to act as an interface between our body and the environment, protecting human life from noxious, toxic substances, UV light, heat and microorganisms. The skin is also the most extensive sensory organ of the body for detection of touch, heat and pain and for the start of vitamin D production. <laughs> Look, a bare hand. We sometimes lay our forehead on it when we feel tired. The envelope of the body, a living border between the inside and the outside, between the wet and the dry. The skin is an assembly of regular cells. It's covered with a network of furrows and plateaus. The translucent spheres are drops of sweat which have reached the surface through pores. The skin thus evolves, breathes and perspires, getting rid of certain wastes of the body. This tormented landscape is our epidermis, magnified 150 times. Within it, the layers of cells are in constant renewal. Cells are already dead when they reach the surface, disposed of and replaced by others produced in deeper layers. Here we are now at the heart of the epidermis. The membranes form a protective waterproof barrier. For this very purpose, they're joined together by something like a press stud, this dark crescent at the center of the image. Yet we can also see how they're arranged in lipid layers placed side by side, limiting exchanges with the outside. Our microscope has unfortunately now reached its limits. Beyond this, nothing more is visible for the moment. our attention on a particular tree. There it is, rooted in the earth, trunk rising up, branches splayed out, swaying in the wind, with or without buds or leaves, depending on the season. Is the bark, for example, part of the tree? And if I break a piece of bark off in my hand and observe it closely, I'll doubtless find that it's inhabited by a great many tiny creatures that have burrowed beneath it and made their homes there. So are they part of the tree? And what of the algae that grow on the outer surface of the trunk, or the lichens that hang from the branches? Moreover, if we've decided that bark-boring insects belong as much to the tree as does the bark itself, then there seems no particular reason to exclude its other inhabitants, including the bird that builds its nest there, and the squirrel for whom it offers a labyrinth of ladders and springboards. I want to insist that the inhabited world is comprised not of objects, but of things. So when I speak of the entanglement of things, I mean this literally and precisely, not as a network of connections, but as a meshwork of interwoven lines of growth and movement.
Okay, <laughs> that's it.